push everything aside today and we focus on you this morning. Thank you, Jesus.
Yeah. 
Father, we thank you. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross. He paid a price he didn't know. Last month, we talked about Peter, if you remember, on how when he was focused on Jesus, he walked on water. Well, for some reason, I felt the need to continue that. Something uh, Brother Tommy had said a while back when his pastor was new to a church and he kept preaching the same message over and over. And he was asked why. He said, well, when you get what I'm preaching, then we can move on to something else. So the Holy Spirit had told me to not go backwards, but to show you another evidence that Jesus wants us to focus on him. And not what the world says we are to focus on. I'll tell you a quick short story in the Gospel of Luke in chapter 10. Verse 38, it says, Now it happened as when they, he had entered a certain village, and a certain, whim, a certain woman named Martha uh -huh, welcomed him into his house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. 
So that that kind of told me that there was more than one or two people there. If she also sat at Jesus' feet to hear the word. But Martha was distracted. Concerned with much serving. Serving who? Jesus also, but serving everyone else who was attending. Who was she was concerned about making everything was so perfect. Naturally, she got aggravated. I know if you're stuck at home and you're doing all the cleaning, you're doing the service, you're gonna get aggravated. You're gonna ask for somebody to help you, right? And she sees her sister just sitting there lounging around by Jesus' feet, saying, Wait a minute, I want to be there. Jesus, would you tell her to come and help me? Why let me do this all on my own? So naturally, you might would think, Jesus would say, okay, well, go help her. But is that what Jesus told her? No. Let's read. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha. Now, I think at this point, we can actually put our own names in these two sentences, these two parts. I said, Kenny, Kenny. The Lord says, Kenneth. That is different. <laughs> but she said, he, Jesus says, Martha, Martha. You are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed. What was that thing needed? She chose that one thing. Not what was going on in the house. But she chose to sit by Jesus' feet and listen to what he had to say. The one thing that is needed, Mary has chosen that good part. And guess what? That will not be taken away from her. To me, that tells me that's important. And Jesus was glad and he also wanted her to pay attention to what he was saying, what he was teaching. I wasn't there. But by reading and by praying and asking, this is telling me that Jesus said this is important. You will always have things to do. He never said that there won't become things that distracts us. There will never be something that you're clean from and say, oh, I don't have anything to do with no worries on my mind. At least that ain't never happened to me. There's always something in the back of my mind popping up, saying, oh, I got to do this. Oh, I forgot to do this. Oh, I did this and I shouldn't have did this. But Jesus said what she did will not be taken from her. She put all her attention on Jesus. Please open the top. So when Jesus broke bread with his disciples, do you not think that he wanted their undivided attentions of what he was telling them what's about to happen for the umpteen time again? It was important because he had, God has sent his only son to die. This is something that has never been seen and has never been accomplished before. That his son was to die for our distractions for our shortfalls so yes I wanted you to pay attention to not me but I wanted you to pay attention to what I have to say so I ask where are you I saw this picture from her I asked where are you in that moment are we here just to go through a ritual are we here because it's Sunday are we here because we're seeking his face in Luke 22 he took bread he gave thanks and broke it he gave it to them saying this is my body which should be given up for you 
to do this in memory. Likewise, he also took the cup. After supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you. Do this also in memory of me. Father, I thank you for your sacrifice. I thank you that you loved us so much to want to bring attention to us of what you've done and what you're about to do, Father. Father, we know these times are different, but your word says that the times will be different when you're ready to come back. Father, I lift everyone up to you that can hear my voice. Father, we love you. We worship you. We give you thanks. Praise you for your glory. In your precious name I pray. Amen. 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 Can you say amen? Amen. Brother Dave, I'm going to keep this mic right here because I didn't put my headset on. Y'all look so good. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, y'all look so, you look so good this morning. You look so terrific today. Amen. Just today. No. Dwayne, you all right, bud? Amen. Brother, Brother Dwayne's been, thank you. Brother Dwayne's been having trouble with his foot. And uh, guess who stepped on it this morning? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Bill. Charles Bill Foot stepped on that thing. Now he has to go get surgery himself. Listen, if you don't think God makes a difference, then do without God in the situation and see what happens. Amen. I'd, I'd rather go through situations with the Lord. Amen. Instead of without the Lord. Amen. So we're here today to preach loud. You know, I'm here to praise the Lord today. Amen. What good are praises if they're wasted just on good times? Amen. Yes, don't let the rock, the rock is not going to cry out in my place today. We're going to we're going to praise the Lord and we're going to preach. Amen? Amen. God is good all the time. And if we mean that, then all the time God is good. Amen. Through everything and anything we might go through. Amen. Open your Bibles to Psalm chapter 149. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time there, but as I was uh looking through the Bible Gateway, which I go with through regularly, I saw the, the memory verse there, and it just drew me through the entire chapter. But as you turn there, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, so much that we can come into your house and worship you, that we can share communion together, Lord, to remember, Lord Jesus, all that you have done for us, Father God, way back when, it's still effectual today. And Father, we give you honor and glory and praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Beginning in verse 1 of Psalms 149, and I'm preaching to you from the King James Version, so you know I'm serious today. Amen. I got my KJV today. Are you ready? Thompson Chain reference too. Get ready. Do you love the Lord? It said, praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Listen, when we're a new people with a new heart, it requires a new song. Amen. Amen. Listen, I used to sing, the. you know, there's a tear in my beer. And also the kind of stuff. That, the reason why there was a tear in the beer because it's depressing when you drink beer and you got a sorrow going on. That don't make nothing better. Amen. I'd rather have a tear at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Than have a tear in my beer. So if I'm new and I have a new heart, then it's time to sing a new song. Amen. It's time to have that new praise on. No matter what is going on in life, to praise God. Amen. For everything. What good is our praise if we waste it just on good times? Amen? Amen. Our prayers or praises is much more effectual whenever we praise God out of the tough times. It's easy to praise God when things are good. Amen? But it's wonderful and powerful when we praise God out of trying times. And the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. When we begin to praise God up in here, the Lord shows up. Amen. Because he wants to be among what what is going on in here. Amen. He makes everything about him because it is all about him. But he comes to touch us as well. 
Amen. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of the saints. Verse 2, let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful, re joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Hmm. How many of you know it's a dance in the house of God? Not to the tear and the beard, but to the new song. Do you love the Lord? Hallelujah. Is it okay if we dance a little bit? Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel, which means the tambourine and the harp, or the guitar in our case. Amen. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. Look at your neighbor and say, God takes pleasure in you. And it didn't say that if you were sinless, it didn't say if you were beautiful, it didn't say if you were educated, it didn't say if you were baptized in the Holy Ghost, it didn't say whether you're Baptist or Pentecostal. The Lord takes pleasure in his people. You are a pleasure to God. Amen. I don't know what you think you look like in the mirror, but to God, you're beautiful. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. You all right? I'm just checking on your foot. Okay, amen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let me back up a little bit. Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. That's a message right there, y'all. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all the saints. Praise ye the Lord. This psalm takes on a whole new different connotation. Amen. It starts out with this wonderful, beautiful attachment. And then it tells us we're more than just saints. We're more than just saved people. When God takes pleasure in his people, we're people of power. We are people of authority. We are people who should take authority over what the enemy does. Amen. And sing praises to God right in the face of the devil. Don't be afraid of Slewfoot. Amen. When well, you got Jesus on your side, do you love the Lord? I just wanted to throw this song in there because it just got me all. Hey Amen. It fired me up. I said, "Yes, Jesus." What good is our praise if it's just during good times? Listen, this psalm is applicable in all times, but especially powerful through times that are hardest to face in this life. How many of you have ever had hard times? Listen, one thing we can count on, just when we think we, it can't get any worse, it does. And it will as we progress in these last days toward the rapture. It's going to get worse. Amen. But I am still one who believes... Amen. I don't know if America is going to recover. I don't know if the world is going to recover from COVID. But I know the nations of God are going to have revival. I believe that. I believe in the midst of the darkness, light is going to shine brighter than ever before. And that soul is going to come to Christ more than ever before. I'm one who believes that. Amen. Because whenever it gets bad, that's when God shows up and shows out. Amen. Hey, and how much more worse can they get? Listen, there are wonderful things happening right now in the face of COVID. There are people getting saved. There are revivals breaking out. There are prayer meetings going on. There are miracles happening. We need to just look around and see it. Amen. Do you love the Lord? Yes. Sing a new song. <laughs> Sing a new song today. Do you love the Lord? Yes. But we have hope and darkness. And what's his name? Jesus. Hope has a name, and his name is Jesus. If we have Jesus in our heart, daily following him, remaining faithful to him, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. 11, Hebrews 11.6 11, in this message today, I want to preach to you this. The reward is victory in vicious times. Victory in vicious times. I couldn't think of a word to describe. And the word vicious is kind of, we live in some vicious times. Where Satan is attacking the church of God. Where Satan is attacking the word of God itself. Where Satan is attacking the authority of the church. Where Satan is attacking the spiritual. There's a mega battle going on. Amen. And we see it outwardly, but spiritually, it's really hot right now. Amen. But it doesn't mean that we lose out. Psalms 149 stands even in the vicious times. Amen. We don't have to pout. 
We don't have to be down and out. We don't have to be pressed or oppressed. We can rejoice in the face of difficulty because our Lord Jesus is alive. Amen. Do you love the Lord? God is good. As we head forward toward the rapture, how many of you know that's coming? Toward the rapture, church, times will continue to be hard and yet unbelievably hard after the rapture and into the, the times of the seven year tribulation. Can I tell you something? If you can't serve God now, if, you have, if you're having a hard time just coming to the church on Sunday, if you're having a hard time sharing your faith, if you're having a hard time just giving God praise, if you, now, on this side of the rapture, boom, <laughs> it's going to get more difficult on the other side of the rapture. Where we're living by faith, simply by faith, making sacrifices by faith unto the Lord, and living most of our life symbolically when it comes to dying a death, meaning spiritually, dying to self and serving God, how are we going to do when we literally have to give up our very breath to prove our faithfulness to the Lord? If you can't serve Jesus now, you better go in the rapture. Quit crying in the beer and start crying at the feet of Jesus. Do you love the Lord? I'm not saying anybody's an alcoholic in here or anything. I'm not trying to imply that. But what I mean is we need to stop turning to the things of self and the things of the flesh and turn to God right now. Amen. For the truth, the people of God do that more often than not. Yes. Okay, but I'm not preaching on that today. <laughs> but, you know, it's not impossible because there will still be people getting saved after the, tribu after the rapture into the tribulation it's going to be 144,000 it's going to be unleashed upon the earth it's going to spread the gospel and people will still be getting saved amen if you want to stick around and find out what's going on and just I don't Lord deliver me from stupid I know we're on television but I can't say it any other way to, make, to wait around to make the choice to wait around for that tribulation period because you want to see what's going on? That's just dumb. That's not even elevated this dude. Do you love the Lord? Let me go on because I don't want to stay. I don't want to get in trouble. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12. Here's what I'm going to be preaching on today. Revelation chapter 12 and beginning in verse 1. Listen. It's getting serious in life. Wouldn't you agree? And it's about to get more serious than ever before. How serious are we about serving God? That is about to be measured. Amen in the church. I believe that with all my heart. Let's read verses 1 through 5. It says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared an, a, a, another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and they cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as he was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all the nations with the rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Who are we talking about here? Jesus. And man, this first few verses just kind of gives a recollection of what has happened. Jesus was to be born. It was prophesied that a Savior would come and that he would rule with the rod iron. He would be in charge. And now uh, you have Herod who's looking for this 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 coming king to have him what killed before he is even born so he orders a decree that all firstborn male children should be killed and in order to try to kill this baby jesus or this messiah that's to come forth listen the devil tried like crazy to take jesus out even then and we know he could not praise be to god and that's what this is talking about israel giving birth to the king or that the king would come forth from the nations of israel Amen, and of the, of the Jewish faith or the Jewish uh, nation. 
So now let's move on to verse 6 and read on. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God, hmm, that they should feed her there a, a thousand two hundred and threescore days. Now, the woman fled into the wilderness means she was persecuted by the dragon. The woman Israel is talking about right here, not Mary. In the, in the verses between verse 5 and 6, there's, there's a lot of time that has, that has gone by since then. In fact, from the ascension of Christ until now, the last days have begun. And that's where it's talking about and it's catching up now into the revelation days, into the last days, into the end times. Are you with me? Sing to say amen. Yeah. And the woman, she fled into the wilderness, persecuted by the dragon. The woman Israel, protected by God in a prepared place for 1,260 days. The 1260 days is referring to the three and a half year period or the second three and a half year period in the, in the tribulation times. Amen. In this instance right here, as it speaks of in Daniel chapter nine. Are you with me? Since Revelation 12, 5 describes the ascension of Jesus and Revelation 12, 6 describes a yet to occur events beginning in verse 6. In the 70th week of Daniel, uh, of the book of Daniel, between these two verses, hundreds of years, this current period has passed. The place prepared in the wilderness, some believe, is the rock city of Petra. And there's believed also that it's being stocked and packed with the word of God and with tracks and with everything prepared for that time of the tribulation days. This is actually taking place, amen. Listen, what God says will come to pass. Rest assured, it's coming to pass in that time. Now let's go to verse seven and eight. And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought his angels and his angels and prevailed, prevailed, prevailed not, neither was there any more place found in heaven. This is a war between Michael and the dragon. Who is the dragon? Who is Michael? The archangel. This is the man in charge of, of the angels now. Amen. And now there's a face off. In these last days yes there's gonna be another war in heaven and yes Satan's gonna be cast to earth again for the last time where he can stay out of heaven where he is the accuser of the brethren he'll no longer be the accuser of the brethren God's gonna change things do you love the Lord we need to be shouting about this because I know about you I'm ready to go Amen. I even saw that NASA is now even changing names of nebulas and all this kind of stuff as not to be offensive to anyone nowadays. Let me tell you something. It has to stop somewhere. But the truth is, it's not going to stop somewhere. Amen. It's going to continue on until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are we ready? Let's stop looking for things to get better. Let's start looking for the sky to split. Are we ready for that? Are you rapture ready today? I hope so. I hope so, because I don't want to be crying in my beer when I hear the trumpet sound. <laughs> oh, what was that? Did I have too many bears? <laughs> Do you love the Lord? No, I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> Listen, at the midpoint of the Great Tribulation, God will turn the tide against Satan. First in heaven and then on earth. Because he's going to be cast down to earth for the last time where then another war is going to take place we know as the battle of Armageddon. Amen. We're going to be there for that. We're going to be up on white horses. We're going to see this. Can I sit? Can, Jesus, can I sit right next to you with a sword in my hand? Can, can I go first? I'm telling you. You ever get like that? The devil was a man. He'd done been whooped five minutes ago. Amen. But see, Jesus already whooped him. We don't have to whoop an enemy that's already whooped. Amen. Jesus took care of that on the cross a long time ago. We should be walking in victory. We should be the funniest looking people on the face of the earth with a smile on the face all the time. Amen. Even when it gets hard, we can do. Why are you smiling in tough times? Because Jesus is alive and he has defeated Satan way back then. We have won even before it started when the Lord Jesus was on the cross and he said, it is finished. What was really he was saying, that part was finished. This part's finished. It's just now starting. 
A. When we decide to trust in the Lord beyond our understanding, it's just starting. And our, 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 our misery is finished. God don't always take away the problem, but he can take away the misery while you're going through the problem. Amen. I thank God that he doesn't do it my way. <laughs> Lord did it my way. Some of you be in trouble. I mean, some of you, <laughs> some people would be in trouble. If you love the Lord, especially when driving by Walmart. I don't know. <laughs> At midpoint of tribulation, God's going to turn the tide first in heaven, then on earth. A battle will take place that will deny Satan access to heaven. Who fights the battle? Michael and his angels against Satan and his angels. Why is it fought? In a previous scene of conflict between Michael and Satan in, in Jude 9, Satan wants to prevent the resurrection and glorification of Moses because he knows that God has plans for the resurrected and glorified Moses. Amen. Do you love the Lord? As it talks about in Luke 9, 30 and 31. See, here's another occasion where Satan wants to get in the way of God's plan for the end. The devil is not going to give up until the end. And the Bible does talk about in the last part of this chapter, he knows his time is short. Amen. So he's pulling out all the stops. Do you love the Lord? The church needs to know that time is short. Amen. Do you love the Lord? The world needs to know that time is short. But there's a battle that would take place. Where is it? Where? When is it fought? The battle occurs at the midpoint of the seven-year period of the tribulation described by Daniel. In Daniel 12, 1, it says, At that time Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there should be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. At that time, your people shall be delivered. Can I tell you something? We are not in the great tribulation period right now. For many reasons. One, it's only going to be seven years. And how long has this been going on? Way more than seven years. Amen. Number two, the Antichrist is not up and running around just yet. He's not in charge. Amen. I can give you so many reasons to tell you why we are not in the Great Tribulation period. This is not the hard times like it's going to be. But Troy, this is a miserable message. <laughs> Let me encourage you. It's going to get worse. <laughs> And you say praise the Lord. <laughs> Is God still good all the time? <laughs> Amen. Do you love the Lord? Amen. Hmm. Where am I at? I'm in church. <laughs> when is the battle fought? The battle occurs at the midpoint of the seventh year period of tribulation. But Israel is going to be delivered. And so are we by that time. Listen, how is it fought? Is it believed to be a material or literal fight where Satan loses his access to heaven? Has Satan been in heaven? Satan has been allowed to go to heaven, yes. amen, and accuse us before the Lord. Yes, he has. Yes. Huh? Yes. Consider Job. Where, where was, God didn't go down to hell and see what Satan was doing. Right. Actually, he's not in hell yet. He will be. But he, the, the, God didn't go looking for him. He came looking for God. And then God said, what are you doing? And he said, oh, looking for trouble. And God said, well, consider my servant Job. Go cause him some trouble. Huh? He had access to heaven, but he would no longer have access. No longer be he, will he be an accuser of the brethren. God, God is in control of all this, y'all. Do you love the Lord? Why is God allowing all this to happen at the same time? I don't know. Stay saved and ask him when you see him. I don't know. He didn't even reveal everything to John. Who am I? But there will be another war fought. In heaven, no longer would Satan give be access that he's defeated, along with a third of his angels who became demons, and they are cast down to the earth. Now, that happened already in the first time he was cast out of, out of heaven. Amen. He tried to make war with God. Lucifer did. He became Satan and took a third of the, of the angels with him, and they became demons. Amen. But praise be to God. He only took a third. That means two-thirds are still faithful to God. That means they are outnumbered two to one. Yes. And all we really need is one angel to just mix it up really good and we got two to one? What are we talking about when we say we're walking defeated? What are we doing walking around oppressed in certain situations? We have already won. Yes. 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 I'm glad 
15 of you are catching that. I don't want to live defeated no more. Hey Amen. I don't want to live off. Uh, Brother Troy, but God didn't take away this like I thought he would. So Jesus still had to be crucified anyway. What you complaining about? Huh? Would you rather trade places? God is good all the time. Listen, it's comforting to know that the demons are outnumbered. <laughs> Verses 10 through 11. We're going we're gonna to hurry up. Through. Wow, it's only five after five. I thought it was fun. <laughs> that, that doesn't mean I'm going to slow down, though, okay? <laughs> Listen, verse 10 and 11. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Lord God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Amen. And, verse 11, this is what we're really rolling right here. And, the, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Amen. Oh, amen. <laughs> Y'all need to see this. Hey Amen. If you can, if you like to shout now, don't go to heaven. <laughs> Amen. Let's not be afraid to get excited and happy about this. Let's not be upset about the end of times. Let's rejoice. Yes. Amen. Amen. We're almost home. Listen, I don't want to live in this earth forever. Can you imagine it if this was heaven? There are some religions who think this is hell. Well, you know, this is hell. We're going to just be stuck here forever and forever to pay penance. For da -da -da. No, it isn't. There's a place worse than this. And some people think that this is heaven. Jesus died for this? I hardly think so. Amen. Do you love the Lord? Hey! If I looked at that and I did that thing. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Listen. The blood of Jesus overcomes Satan's accusations. Those accusations mean nothing against us because Jesus has already paid the penalty that our sins deserve. Do you love the Lord? We may even be worse than Satan's accusations. You ever thought of that? But we are still made righteous by the work of Jesus on the cross. Ephesians 1, 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Praise be to God. The blood speaks to us of the real physical death of Jesus in our place on our behalf before God, the literal death of, in our place and the literal judgment he bore on our behalf is what saves us. The blood of Jesus has cleansed us and has made us whole and has saved us. But it's not the blood itself. It's what the blood represents was the death of Jesus Christ and his eternal sacrifice is what saves us still today. And that sacrifice still is effectual unto today. Amen and through beyond. Listen, we have reason to rejoice this morning in Psalms 149 for the one we're reading about now. Praise be to God I'm saved. Do you love the Lord? You ever just stop and just thank God and say, Lord, thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. Goodness. That's, I pray we never forget who, who we used to be. Because <laughs> I don't want to go back there. Man, I don't want to go back there. Do you love the Lord? The blood speaks of the real physical sacrifice that Jesus, the Lamb, made for us. The lamb is a substitutionary work of his death, the sacrificial lamb. Listen, his blood heals our troubled conscience because we know that by his death, sin is atoned for. Yes, amen. Thank you, Lord. The blood of the lamb works first because his victory, his victory, his victory is our victory. Yes, amen. His death is our death. His resurrection it's our resurrection. We have hope because of Jesus. Do you love the Lord? Therefore, Satan is already, literally, and truly defeated right now because of the death of our Lord Jesus. He is a vanquished enemy, 
even before the day showed up. I'm have to preach a little longer now. Too. But Kenny said until we get it. Amen. I'm just gonna lay this for her. Do you love the Lord? Satan's already defeated. So why are we walking around all defeated? I'm going to challenge you to do, challenge you to something. Huh. I pray that God don't lift that thing off until you learn how to praise him through it. Because the Lord is not just concerned about your healing so you can go back to the way you used to. And maybe that's why he hadn't lifted it yet. Because he's more concerned about whether you're going to go to heaven or not. Whether he wants you to be healed to go back to your old ways. Um, listen, the Lord don't do things the way. This is not Burger King religion. Praise God. I'm glad I don't have it my way. <laughs> it's bigger than a Whopper, though. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> His victory is our victory. Satan is already defeated. <laughs> He's a vanquished enemy already. Therefore, by faith, we can grasp the Lord's victory as our victory since he has already triumphed on our behalf. He's already won. But Lord, what about my unsaved children? Pray for them. I'm praying for mine. I'm praying, and they can, this is on film. I hope they see it on Facebook. You people out there listen to me too. Listen, let me tell you something. I love my children, but I pray that God just rocks their world. Daddy, why are you saying that? Because I love you. And remember the spanking you got to help you pay attention to come to Christ? Pray the same thing for your children. For your children. God, whoop them. I'd rather see them carry the stripes of hard times in this life than cry out from hell for the rest of their life because they don't know you. God, get up. Do you love the Lord? <laughs> and I mean that. Brother Jonah told his kids one day, lovingly and quietly, he said, he said, I would rather see God kill every single one of you while you're still saved than to live a, a, a wonderful life here and die and go to hell. They said, Daddy, why are you preaching that? He said, because I love you. He said, the way you're acting right now, <laughs> you better hurry up and die before <laughs> And they're like, why are you saying that? He said, because I mean it. He said, I'd rather you end up in heaven earlier than expected than to wind up in hell for an eternity because I never told you something. It's on YouTube. People out there in TV land, hey amen, get this message today. It's for all of us today. But we can grasp our victory because it's his victory he's triumphed already in our behalf therefore we use the blood of the lamb in spiritual warfare yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know a long time I, I love the songs oh the blood of jesus and there's power in the blood there's power Power, wonder working, power. Right in. You know, a long time ago, those songs were not allowed in church because they thought it was too gross to sing about. That was the enemy, afraid of what the, the power that is that is sustained in the blood of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Do you love the Lord today? Listen, we're about to get a breakthrough. I can feel it. <laughs> Do you love the Lord? Therefore, we use the blood of the Lamb in spiritual warfare, not as a Christian abracadabra to keep Satan away. Can I make one thing clear? Pentecost is not so that we can get gold teeth and gold dust and diamonds falling from the sky and rooster crowing and laughing and falling over each other. That is not Pentecost. Amen. Neither is the blood of the land to be used as some abracadabra potion to keep Satan away and make us look spiritual. But the blood of the lamb is still used in spiritual warfare. Yes, that's right. But because of our understanding our apprehension and our focus that the death 
of Jesus Christ on the cross as our substitute, that's what wins the battle. And that's where the blood of the Lamb is effectual because the blood of the Lamb was shed for the remission of our sins. It was shed for the healing of our minds, for the healing of our souls, for deliverance from sickness, and so on and so on. Listen, when we take communion, we need to know why we're taking communion. That's right, amen. This kind of goes together, Brother Kate. They planned this about communion today. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. What that means is, let the blood of the Lamb cleanse you and make you whole as a Christian. Hum? Hum? And you overcame, you overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb if you receive the sacrifice that Christ has done for us on the cross. We, we sing this song this morning. I'm coming back to a heart of worship. That's a, that's, a, that's a worship song for the church. Yes, that's right. That's right. Amen. Because sometimes we can lose our focus in worship and why we worship. Amen. Amen. If there ever is a time for the church to refocus, it's now. Amen. Amen. And get our attention. But they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And they overcame him by the word of their testimony. Who got a testimony up in here? Listen. <laughs> we all can lift our hands. Yes. But see, my testimony is not that God delivered me from drugs. That's not my testimony. It is not my testimony that the Lord healed my body. That is not my testimony. It is not my testimony that God delivered me from alcohol. That is not my testimony. My testimony is that I received Jesus into my heart and that he delivered me from the way of sin. And now I live a new life in Jesus Christ. Yeah, we need to know where you've been. That's encouraging other people. But the true testimony is that the blood of the Lamb has cleansed me and has made me whole and has set me free from the grasp of the enemy. I am born again. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You see that? You see, the, the, the disciples, when they came back, when Jesus sent them out by two, they came back rejoicing and saying, even the demons are subject to us. And the Lord said, don't be so rejoiceful about the demons being subject to you, but that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I'm glad I don't drink no more. I'm glad I'm sober crazy. But my testimony is how Jesus came to me and he set me free from myself, from sin. That's my testimony. You see, being homosexual or being a drug addict or being divorces or whatever else or drunk is not what sends us to hell. That's right, that's right, man. I threw a monkey wrench up in your theology. <laughs> There's only two kinds of people, saved or unsaved. I don't get in the gay debate thing. I tell people this, here's the deal. Are you saved? When they start that, I say, are you saved? Well, what does that mean? I'm glad you asked. Because that's what's going to send you to hell if you're not saved. Let's not get sidetracked by the real, uh, the, by the real issue. You heard it first right there on television. God loves us all. And Jesus came for one purpose, to die for everyone. And you know what? If a gay person gets saved and they're still struggling, you encourage them. Because you know all of you still struggling with something that. That he who is without sin cast the first stone. Church need to straighten up before God going to take us up. You love the Lord. We got to get it right inside of here. Our testimony we overcome the enemy by the word of our testimony listen our testimony overcomes Satan's deception knowing and remembering the work of God in our lives protects us against Satan's deceptions as faithful witnesses we have a testimony to bear because we know we know what we have seen we know what we have heard we know what we've experienced from god we overcome satan because we know that 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 we are saved and born again and we know the experiences we've had with god no one can take that away from you when you're convinced of something cajun people especially cajun people you can't change the mind hey man i'm gonna tell you something when you know that you're saved and born again the devil can't touch you I went to the North Shore. Somebody had asked me to sing in their wedding. I said, sure. And uh, I went stay with her 
with her soon-to-be husband at his house. I spent a night there, and he's a chemist. You know, he's a scientist. And we were getting him getting dressed next morning over coffee. He said, I have a question. He said, how do you know the Word of God is true? I said, because I've lived it. I've experienced it. I go through it still today, and I know Jesus personally. You know what he said? Hmm. Okay. Would you like sugar in your coffee? <laughs> you see, I'm going to tell you something. There is no defense against what you know. That's right. I am a witness. That's right. Being a witness is not something you do on Saturdays. That's right. That's right. When the church get together and go out. Hey, you go. Praise God. It's good to see you. Okay, come to church. No, we don't want to talk about Jesus now. Just come to church. Hallelujah. Thank you. We'll see you. Bye. No, that's not. A witness is something you are. You are. A witness in court only is credible if they have seen, if they have heard, or they have smelled, or tasted. They were there. I know what God did in my life. So, devil, take your bags and pack them and get out of my house because I know what my God has said. I know what my God has done. I know what he's going to do. COVID can stay on the ones to. God's going to do great things in the middle of it because God ain't finished. He's true to his word. How do I know that he's true to his word? For all that he has done in my life, I can testify. I completely believe my mother-in-law is still here because people were praying and touching the hem of his garment and interceding. I really believe my wife is doing as well as she is. For the same reason. I believe I made it this far in life. Only because of Jesus. I was headed down a road that was not good. Praise God he found me. At my worst. He found me. He didn't judge me. He didn't condemn me. He received me. And I received him as my Lord and Savior. That's my testimony. Can't nobody take that away from you. When you're covered by the blood of the Lamb, the devil can't get past that. <laughs> Amen. He can't fight against you when he sees. Just like the doorposts were covered yes. when, when in Egypt, huh? When the, yes. when the death angel was coming. Listen, when the devil comes to bother you and he sees, he sees the doorposts of your heart slather with the blood of Jesus, he got to go somewhere else. Because he can't penetrate that power. We're delivered already was saved already we're healed already that's what that's the person who must have wrote that song i got the joy 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 down in my heart where that that's the person who got this message and if the devil doesn't like it he can see it on attack that's my favorite part of the whole song see it on attack are you with me you say that's a kid's song that's my song i'm a, I'm a kid of god i'm, a, I'm god's kid <laughs> got the joy you love God. <laughs> See, rejoice for the new car. We can't we still rejoice six years from now when that car has to go into the shop. <laughs> we overcome Satan because we know what our testimony is. And we overcome in the same way. This very last one really speaks volumes. It says they overcame him because they did not love their lives unto death listen if we do not cling to our earthly lives like a lot of people do if we do not cling to our earthly lives then there's really no threat Satan can bring against us now I'm not saying I'd like to go today I got a family I got grandkids we can probably think of a million reasons why we don't want to go today but you know what when I let go of everything in this life unto the Lord, that means I let go of it all. We're not going to be here forever. And we keep trying to build our lives. There's nothing wrong with building new houses. nothing wrong with getting new vehicles. nothing wrong with that having a life. Listen to me. As long as that don't become... Christians should never be settled here. Because this is not our home. Our home is in heaven. Our home is in heaven. Our home is in heaven. Let me tell you something out there on camera landing in here. Heaven is not automatic. Hollywood has told a lot of lies. The media has told a lot of lies. People do wrong. And well, well, you know, he's in a better place. How do you know if he was saved, he's in a better place? Amen. If she was saved, she's in a better place. 
It's not heaven is not for good people or, or hell is not for bad people. It's for saved or unsaved. We need to get that clear. I mean, no matter how good we are, we still need to be saved. How long do you need to be saved until you die? Well, I said it's in his prayer, 1948 and a half, praise the Lord. Well, what have you done for him lately? See, I've listened to David Jeremiah, and he said, good works doesn't save us, but we're born again unto good works. You love the Lord? Nobody should have to guess. We're Christians. Even if we don't open our mouths. Amen. Or especially when we don't. But if we don't love our lives unto death, and there's no, no threat Satan can bring against us, it's going to get us down. Listen, if we really believe to live as Christ and to die as gain, then how can Satan's violence be against us and be effective? How many of you believe that? To live as Christ and to die as gain. That when I breathe my last breath off of this earth, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to change addresses. See, when I got saved, the Lord put in a change address for me. Amen. I'm going to move there one day. Amen. I would still would like to go in the rapture, not die before, but go like when the trumpet sounds and we all take off. Amen. I wish I knew the date and the time because I would find the graveyard where all my saved people are. Amen. I would sit there with a lounge chair and some Krispy Kremes and have everything I want right there because the Bible said the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. And when I see them graves pop open, they come on out. That'd be a cool thing to video. I'll see you in a minute, Daddy. I would be there. I'm telling you, I'd be there. Next to their grave. Between him, my, my mom, my dad, they're in the same neighborhood. They live in the same cemetery. And I would sit right between. I'm going to go first. And with all this weight, I'm going to jet right past you. I'm going to grab a hold of some of my unsaved family and say, get saved or let go. Listen, that's really coming. The trumpet of God is about to sound and gravity is about to lose its hold upon those who were saved, dead and alive. <laughs> Amen. And we're about to fly without an airplane. No checkpoints. No checking your luggage. That was checked. That should have been checked in a long time ago before you even get on the plane. Are you with me? There's no standby flight. No layover either. One-way ticket. Don't be looking for a two-way ticket. I don't want to come back, her. Do you love the Lord? They love their lives not unto death. They didn't love this life so much. Listen, this life doesn't mean much anymore when we become saved. And so are we trying to get as many as we can to come with us? Knowing that these things are going to happen. Do you love the Lord? Amen. In this scripture of Revelation 12, we can see that in the second half of this great tribulation, that no matter how vicious things are going to become, that the victory is still won by those who are faithful of the congregation of the Lord. Now, it's telling us those, they, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of testimony, to love their, their lives to death. That's yet to come. That is in those most vicious times that's even crazier now. And if they can overcome then, we can overcome now. Do you love the Lord? We can overcome now, victory is still won and still will be won by the faithful in the congregation of the Lord. I'm glad the word of God does not change. Listen, that means that no matter that the Antichrist is going to be in power. It, doesn't, it means that no matter that God's people will be persecuted or even put to death for their faith in Christ, that no matter how violent and vicious people will be against God, victory is still the outcome for those who remain faithful to God unto death. Unto death. Unto death. I'm a, I stressed this before and I will stress it again. You are not saved until you breathe your last breath as a Christian. Hear me clearly. That's the second place in the word of God that it tells us that. They live their lives for it unto death. And the Lord says that those who endure to the end, the same shall be we might have gotten saved and we are made sanctified and holy when we are saved and we accept Jesus Christ into our heart. Let me tell you what, Solomon started out well, but he did not finish well. Read the story of him. Solomon, what can I do for you? Well, Lord, give me all the wisdom. He gave him wisdom. 
Amen. And Solomon became a very rich king, used his wisdom for good things and for some godly things, but he forgot to use it for himself when he started building uh, uh, idols in the, in the direction or in the faith of the temple that was not God. And he married women that God said, don't, you're not, don't even be around these people. And he disobeyed God in the latter part of his days. We may not see Solomon in heaven. But he was King David's son. I don't care. Be quiet. If you read the story of Solomon, it really makes you think, did he make it? Read it. Study it. Did he make it? And the most unlikeliest person that we didn't think would make it, I believe, is in heaven today. And his name's Nebuchadnezzar. Read that story. The whole story. Huh. When we get to heaven, who's going to be there and who's not going to be? Who's not going to be there that we thought was going to be there? And vice versa. Listen, we're servants of God up until our last breath. Amen. But we overcome the lamb by the blood of the lamb. I mean, the, the devil by the blood of the lamb, by the word of a testimony. And we love not our lives even unto death. If they can do that in those times, we can certainly do it in these times. What do you love? The Bible talks about them, talking about the seven churches of, 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 of Asia or seven churches of the Revelation. What was the first one? Return to your first love. Who was he telling that to? God's people. Yeah. You're doing this, 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 but you're not putting me first and, and priority and you're not giving me place in your heart. Return to your first love. Church, it's time to return to our first love. I'm almost done. This is Debbie, if you can please. Second half of tribulation, you're going to be some vicious times, y'all. Doesn't matter what's going on. Listen, even if we die in Christ, we still have victory. Just because a person dies, a Christian may die of something here on earth, doesn't mean they've lost the battle. To live is Christ. And to die is gain. We got this thing a little backwards. Not that we should be happy that we lose anyone. I'm not saying that. Because we love people and we miss them. That's okay. But when we die as Christians, whew, my daddy today has hair. He's running around heaven. My mama no longer has to walk with a walker. She's running around heaven. Passing my dad and say, what's up? What's up with you? High-fiving. That's how I'm picturing it. Leave me alone. That's how I'm picturing it. <laughs> but, they're, but they're receiving their glorified body. They're in heaven. They don't have to worry about those things no more. They're not crying over stuff. They're not in pain anymore. They're in heaven waiting for, probably looking down and saying, I hope he makes it. <laughs> Are you seeing it? Come here, Miss Yvonne. Look at it. Come here, Debbie, Daddy. Take a look at it. You see the people? Now, of course, he's not talking about me. He's talking about my older brother, Reggie. It's on YouTube, bro. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Probably going to get a phone call today. Even if we die, we still have victory. We're still overcomers through the Lord. What's the main point of the message today? Is this. Knowing how vicious and violent things would be at the second half of those tribulations and they're still overcoming, there's still hope for us on this side of the rapture. How much more on this side of the rapture we can overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of a testimony, but not loving our lives to death. In those worst times, in these worst times, we still have victory. Can I encourage you? Please don't be depressed with this COVID thing. Please don't be depressed. Please don't misunderstand. God is still in control. Yeah, that's right, I don't know all what he's doing, but he's up to something. Yes, is. God is never up to nothing. He doesn't sit around idly. And he doesn't allow things without a purpose. Right. We're approaching the last days where the trumpet of God is going to sound. But Satan is already defeated. No situation, no circumstances, and we're outward can defeat us. We can't lose our victory. We have reason to sing a new song today. 
we have reason to look up to Jesus today. Amen. Things happen. You know, the Bible says, be ye not weary in well-doing. For ye shall reap if you faint not. That scripture tells me so much about how much God understands the troubles we go through. The troubles we go through. He understands. Oh, that scripture would not be there. Be not weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. When? In due season. There's a season that you're about to reap for the trouble that you're going through. In due season, the church is about to reap with the persecutions we go through. If we endure, you'll see the blessing of God. For you personally, you will endure and you will see the blessings of God if you don't faint. Don't let the enemy take control. He's already defeated. Amen. God took care of that. Jesus Christ took care of that up on the cross. And he for sure took care of it when he rose again. I would have loved to seen the face of Satan when Jesus come popping out of that grave and says, I'm back. But see, you know the truth? Satan knew it before it happened. Because he believes the word of God and trembles. He was just trying to disrupt it. He wouldn't have worked so hard if he didn't know it was true. All that we as people would know how true the word of God is. And how much Jesus loves us. That he would give his life. That in this vicious time that we live in, that he'd be ready to give his victory. Will you stand with me today all over this place? few more minutes and we're going to be dismissed to our homes today. Listen, we have reason to rejoice, y'all. I don't know what you're going through, but there's reason to rejoice. I was a little down beginning this past week and all this was going on. I even posted, I don't normally do that. But God spoke to my heart and said, I can still make things happen out of the deepest void of your life. Why you worry? God touched and he ministered. God is so good. All the time. Our altar call for this, for the, for the first reason, is this. For those of us who would like to just simply come down and just bow before God and give him thanks, that the Satan is already defeated, the enemy is already defeated, and that I have victory in my situation. You can come today and if you just want to give God thanks for making the overcomer in Christ Jesus. Altar call today is also for those who are ready to believe that Jesus can really do all things. The Lord challenged me with this these last few days. God spoke to me, Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, do you truly believe that I can do anything? I mean, anything? Let it sink in. Anything. He said, if you're going to trust me, and if you're going to believe me, you have to know that I can do anything above what you can even think or comprehend or imagine. Do you believe this? And I responded by praying. Yes, I was in my car. I'm preaching to y'all, but not just praying in the car. But we had church in my car yesterday. Man, I began to call out to the Lord loudly. And I began to call out impossible things to the Lord loudly. And I began to bind loudly. I began to loose <laughs> loudly unto the Lord. And, and just me and the, and, the, and the Lord, that maximum. I don't know how fast I was driving, but it seemed like the, the more I prayed, the faster I drove. But we listen, God challenged me and said, if you truly believe in me, then you have to believe I can do anything. And if you believe I can do anything, then you need to pray that way. You need to pray that way. And the Lord, and I realized at that moment, I had stopped praying for ridiculously big things. And I began to pray, God, help our ministry at Christian Assembly to touch millions. Yeah, but we are small, millions! <laughs> Why? Because hell is ever enlarging itself and we need to reach those who are lost. Millions. I begin to pray crazy. 
Lord, heal my arthritis. Lord, save my boys. Lord, I began to go down the list. God, I want to reach millions. God, I want to touch as many as I can before I breathe my last breath. God, I want to do things that I never thought I could do for you. God, I want to see things happen at Christian Assembly we never thought possible would happen. God, make it so. God, you're challenging me, so now I'm challenging you with my faith. God, in the name of Jesus. And then you know what's like he said? It's about time. We have to stop looking at what is in front of us and what we can see in the physical and start touching heaven by what we can see in the spiritual by faith in God. Satan is already defeated. God can do anything. He can do anything. He can do anything. Anything. Can he save my stubborn husband? He's already working on it. Can you say my stubborn wife? He's already working on it. Why? Because you asked him. But you got to keep believing. Don't believe on Sunday and be down on Monday. You got to know that you know that you know that you know. In fact, to the point, whenever you see your unsaved children, say, why are you smiling? Say, because you're about to go to heaven. You don't realize what you're about to go through to get there because I'm praying for you. But you're going there. You're going to go to heaven. You're going to go to heaven. Why? How do you know that? Because I've asked Jesus to save you. Believe God no, for the, the impossible. Is, Satan's already heaven, defeated. We're going to realize the one thing that stood in the way. You know, the truth is, when we stand in heaven, we're going to realize the one thing that stood in the way. Then, Brother Troy, there can be no more tears in heaven. But there will be a book of judgment open. I think there'll be a then, lot Brother of Troy, there can be no more tears in heaven. But there will be a book of judgment open. I think there'll be a lot of tears in heaven. We, as Christians, are going to be judged according to our works as Christians. And I believe we're going to be sorely afraid. <laughs> the things we missed but God in his mercy is going to welcome us in I don't miss nothing the devil is already out of the way he's already defeated y'all what's the last one for if you've been struggling today with this are struggling today with your faith struggling today and you're disappointed you're frustrated you're depressed you're going through something the altar is open right here we're your brothers and sisters in here. We're not going to judge anybody. We're going to get around you and we're going to pray with you. I guarantee that. Christian Sam is a church of love. It's a church of understanding. Some great people here, y'all. If you're struggling today, hold your hand. But try, I'll be honest, I'm struggling today. I'm going to do something. Those of you raising the hands, I'm going to challenge you. Come stand up right here. I believe in bringing your stuff to the altar. That place of sacrifice. We're going to sacrifice these things to God today. If you're struggling in your faith, if you're going through something, please come stand. But if you're having a hard time, stay right there. We're going to get somebody to come to you. Will somebody go to Brother Noblock? We're going to pray with him and agree in prayer. Go we'll stand with him because we're going to agree in prayer. We're going to agree in prayer. Anybody else before we close? Don't leave with the same burden you came in with, man. Don't leave with the same burden you came in with. The Lord says he's come to take our heavy burden. Amen. And he challenges us to put his yoke upon us because... His yoke is easy and his burden is light. There's no shame in saying, Brother Troy, I've been through, I've been through some struggles. I've been, I've been having a hard time. Because you know what? We all go through them. I was going through it this week because in my, in my flesh I was just so tired. It seemed like it's been one thing after another. And I said, Lord. The Lord said, go back to Genesis 1 <laughs> and 1 and 2. And beginning... God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was that was without form and with and, and and void, without form and it was void. But the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the deep. We can never go in places of darkness that the Holy Spirit is not following us or trailing with us. And God reminded me, look at all of our created after something that was nothing. Out of the deepest void in our lives, the deepest hurt. God will bring life. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are up here at the altars today, those who have come, and those who are here now. Father, we believe in you beyond any doubt. Lord, we know that we have victory in vicious times because your word has not changed. 
Jesus, you have not changed. And Lord, but we're seeing more powerful things happen as we trust you, as we sing a new song, as we are the faithful ones in your congregation, Lord. We're beginning to see, Father God, how in the midst of all this darkness, we're seeing the light of Christ begin to stir and begin to move around and begin to touch upon the places of darkness and people are getting healed and saved and delivered. And today we come to you, Father God, to touch those who are struggling today, those who are having a hard time in their faith. God, those who are in a hard time in their lives and situations that don't understand, Father God, and we're struggling. Those of you at home, you can pray these prayers. Get down on your knees if you're at home today, if you're watching this, and ask God to touch your life today. Ask the Lord to come into your heart. The darkest place we can ever be is without Jesus. But the Lord said, if you come unto me, all you that labor in a heavy laden, I'll give you rest. The Lord will save you today. He'll heal you. He'll deliver you today ask him to come into your heart if you're not saved and receive him as lord and savior of your life and set in your heart to serve him and find a good church where that's preaching the gospel and get in and learn of him get you a bible and read and study and get to know him more deeply and more intimately whether you're watching youtube today or you're here today in this church god loves you and he has not forgotten you and he's not forsaken you the devil wants you to think that because Satan knows his time is short and he has no power over God's children. Father, touch those who are struggling and give them strength today. In the name of Jesus, give them strength and faith. Give them strength in spirit, and soul, and mind, and body. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Father, our faith is in you. Jesus, thank you for your blood that has power to forgive sins and to heal us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and to deliver us and to help us and to save us. Thank you, Lord, that we know by experience with you, times past is going to help us to stand strong today. Because, Lord, you would do it again if you've done it then. Lord, we give to you this life today. I set our affections, Lord, today upon you. Thank you for helping us. Thank you, Jesus, for salvation and redemption. Thank you for healing. Thank you for touching mom in law this week and my wife. And Father, whoever has been going through the tough stuff, thank you for that word of encouragement right now. Thank you for a touch of your Holy Spirit that brings strength. Holy Spirit, you are our strength. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name.